Let's keep rolling with this same idea of these jazzier sounding progressions. That 2-5 motion that we just introduced over in measures 9 and 10 were accommodated with a minor 7 for the 2 and then the E7 or E7 altered for the 5 chord. Always keep your ears open because in jazz those dominant chords can be altered a lot of times. Well, if you look at example 7, the only difference is that instead of a 2 minor in measure 9, we have a 2 dominant. It can go either way. And you have extensions available on this. Now, this is a big subject. I'll try and give you a quick overview, but don't worry if you don't get every little thing. Just keep your ears open. We went along. We played 1, and then the 4, the 1, the 5, or 1 altered, going to the 4. There's my two dominant. It's a different sound. Now this is important because, you know, you have to have your ears on when you're playing music, and especially when you start playing the jazzier things, because in jazz we have options. If we go to a two chord playing a blues, it can be dominant or it can be minor. And if it's a dominant, it could be altered or it could be unaltered. If you don't understand all this, you've got plenty of time to learn it, but the point I'm trying to drive home here is keep your ears open. If you're playing along on a tune, let's say you're playing with a pianist, you've got to make sure you don't play minor if he plays dominant and vice versa. If you're soloing, you need to know which chord it is. And don't think that this stuff's just written in stone. When we start jamming on a jazz tune, especially on a blues, everybody's listening for what's going to be going on, from the bass player right through every instrument. So I wanted to point that out. And uh, as far as when to use altered dominance or when to use unaltered dominance, keep your ears open and experiment. Now, if we were just playing our three-note structures, remember, those don't bring in any fifths or ninths. It's when you start adding the fifths, you need to experiment. And how many options do we have with a five? We only have three options. Let's examine these. Here is an A7. We've got a natural five right there. An A7 flat five. A lot of tension. You might say by itself it's ugly. Well, maybe so, but in the context of a progression, it could sound great. And by the way, that's a normal fingering. I like this fingering or this fingering because then I can move. I have all three accessible, so I'm using a cross bar. My first finger plays the sixth string A, rolls over, catches that flat five, the E flat. I've got my second finger on the flat seven, my fourth finger on the third, then I can come down from my natural fifth, and I can hyperextend my little finger for the sharp five. Now that's when I need to include the bass line. If I'm just playing, if I don't need the bass line, I've got my two guide tones. and then So that covers your six string rooted area with the dominance, both all unaltered and altered as far as the fifth. You need to memorize this mapping. If this is one, this is five always. That's how the guitar is. So flat five would be here, sharp five would be here. Know that. If the one is on the fifth string, well, you have a couple of options. You can play the five. Everything just moves over one string group, and it doesn't change. So if you had a D7, D7 sharp five, D7 flat five, you have the same thing available. But you could also apply it over on the fourth string. D7, D7 flat five, D7 sharp five. And if you're not playing the bass line, same thing applies. Practice it both ways. If you don't know how to use that right away, don't worry. I just wanted to throw that in so you'd have some idea when I throw those things in. You'll know what I'm doing. Let's go back to your ninths because if you see where they are, you understand your options. The unaltered tones will be the natural fifth and the natural ninths. Let's go to the sixth string root. Your nine is going to be a whole step above the root, so it's up over here on the first string. You also have one a little lower, so be aware that it depends where you want to voice it. Flat nine would be down a fret, sharp nine would be up a fret. That way, if you take your guide tones for the A7, here's your bass note. I have a flat five, a natural five, and a sharp five. I have a root. Flat 9, natural 9, sharp 9. I can mix and match these in any combination and understand what I have right under my fingers. It's not like I've learned 20 different fingerings. I'm seeing what I'm doing. So I encourage you to do that. The same thing over on your fifth string root. Here's your root, flat 9, 9, sharp 9. So here's D7 with the root up on top. D7 flat 9, D9, three different fingerings there. D7 sharp 9. 
Now, there'll be spots where you might try something that's not going to work. Keep your ears open, but also do an analysis. A lot of times, the reason you're using altered dominance is because it brings out the blues scale sound. And we said that knowing when to play what is really a matter of ears and experience. Let's go back and examine what we have on this progression where we're on measures 9 and 10. We stuck a 2-5 progression in there. If you're going along, I'm going to pick it up from measure um, 7. I'm back on the 1. <laughs> There I went B minor 9, B minor 7. You could also do B minor 7, 11. Those are all good choices. I have a sharp 9, a flat 9, a sharp 5, a natural 5. Now, you can even put a flat 5 in there. You'll hear big horn bands, you know, the big band stuff. They'll put that stuff on the 5 chord. You have to be careful. And remember also, register-wise, you're up high to where you could get in the way of the soloist. So don't start banging out all these altered tones when the soloist is soloing in that register, you know. You're not going to make them very happy. Are right, we going to move on with this kind of idea of turnarounds kind of coming in on measures 9 and 10, setting up for the actual turnaround, these 2-5 ramps and whatnot. And we're going to introduce another chord in measure 8 on our next lesson.